Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how Robinhood is actually able to make money, despite the fact that it is a completely free to use financial services application. We're also going to be taking a look at how it is potentially costing you when you use their services to invest. And now you might be thinking to yourself, come on, the app's completely free. Obviously, the only way they make money is through perhaps the premium service, such as Robinhood Gold, where you pay $5 for the premium financial services. But in the back end, there's actually other things going on, other ways that Robinhood goes ahead to make money that us, its users, are actually unaware of and cost us. And don't get me wrong, I personally have used Robinhood over the last about two years now and I have really enjoyed it. But then I started thinking, if this software is actually free to use for all of its users, how do they actually make money? And of course, Robinhood Gold, I thought, okay, $5 a month times the amount of users potentially pay for this extra $5 convenience each month, perhaps to make some fair amount of money. But there's gotta be other ways that they actually make money on their platform. So I went and did a little Googling and found on their Robinhood website, five different ways that they actually go and make money. So if we take a look at how Robinhood is actually able to generate revenue, they have about five different ways that they're able to generate revenues for their platform. Taking a look, we see that they have Robinhood Gold, which is pretty much just a monthly subscription for the users to have additional premium financial services on their app, rebates from market makers and trading venues, which we'll go into more detail a bit later on that, as well as additional income generated from cash, stock loan income from counterparties, as well as purchases made with their cash management and debit card program that they offer on the platform. We're gonna go ahead and take a further dive into this to really understand how it is they make money on their end. So let's first take a look at Robinhood Gold. So for those of you who don't know what Robinhood Gold is, it's pretty much just a powerful investing tool that they offer on that platform that pretty much gives you access to research reports from Morningstar, as well as NASDAQ level two market data, as well as larger instant deposits and margin investing. Usually users only pay about $5 monthly fee for the service. Now with Robinhood Gold, I've used it for a couple months and really the only big difference I notice is that I'm able to use larger deposits for when I'm transferring money into that account. When using Robinhood Gold, I was able to have a maximum deposit of about $10,000, which was nice to have over the maximum instant deposit of $1,000 if you're not a Robinhood Gold member. My personal preferred way of investing in the stock market is more long-term uh, for dividends as well as growth stocks. So I'm not really big on margin investing. And for those of you who don't know what margin investing is, it's pretty much uh, taking money that you don't have from Robinhood and using that money to try and invest in a company because you believe wholeheartedly that the company is gonna grow 15% in perhaps the next week or month or whatever time you think. So you can sort of think of it like a credit card for investing. Again, I'm not really a big fan of this because if you don't have the money to invest in things right now, that's totally fine. Just go ahead, save some money, work, pay off other things that are costing you money. It's so like that over time, you can go ahead, save money and go ahead and invest. It's not about trying to borrow money that you don't have to try and hope that the stock market goes up because then if the stock market doesn't go up and it goes down, right? Then now you're stuck paying back all this additional money that you already didn't have in the first place. And it could just lead to a whole down effect of you pretty much buried your own grave. So I personally don't recommend using margin investing, but if you're really confident in it, that is an option you can do with Robinhood Gold. Not to mention, you also have to pay interest on the principal that you borrow from Robinhood. So already right out of the gate, you're guaranteed that you're gonna lose money. Plus, if your investment doesn't go up and it actually goes down, then not only are you having to lose money on interest, but you've lost money on the money that you borrowed that you were hoping was gonna make you more money. So again, I'm not really a big fan of margin investing, but if you wanna go ahead and try it out, or you know, maybe you're better at margin investing than I am, then by all means, I wish you the best of luck in that. The second way Robinhood is able to generate money is from straight up cash. So they actually have an income from the cash that they store in their accounts. They pretty much go ahead and take this cash and put it in high interest banking accounts. That way, the money that's in that account is able to go ahead and generate more and more money. When you have millions and millions of users transferring the money into Robinhood, Robinhood's gonna have quite some money to be able to put into those accounts. And that leads us to the third way that Robinhood is able to generate money. They're able to generate money from stock loan income. What this pretty much means, when you go ahead and do margin investing with the Robinhood Gold premium account, you actually have to pay interest on the money that you take out. So if you have $2,000 and you wanna borrow another $2,000 from margin investing, so you can invest a total of $4,000, let's say in Tesla, right? 
because you're really betting that it's going to go up. If you lose that money or it goes up, it doesn't matter. Either way, Robinhood actually makes money on the $2,000 that you took out. And Robinhood states that for the first $1,000 that you use with margin investing, it's completely free pretty much because you paid the $5 for the monthly service. But anything after that, you're actually gonna go ahead and pay a 5% interest on the money borrowed for the year. And technically speaking, it's actually a little less than a year. So the way they calculate it is that they go ahead and take the money that you borrowed, times it by 5% and divide that by 360 days. So again, I'm not really recommending margin investing, but if you're gonna go ahead and borrow money to go ahead and invest, plus not to mention pay interest on that borrowed money, please make sure that you go ahead and do the research before you invest. Because remember, if you end up losing that money that you invested, you have to pay back the money that's owed on top of the interest that you already owe on the money you took out. So it's a lose-lose for you if it goes down. So again, please do your research. Do your research before you go ahead and do margin investing. The fourth way is from rebates from market makers and trading venues. And at this point, I know you might be thinking, what is a market maker? You can pretty much think of market makers as middlemen as they're the broker or dealer who is prepared to buy or sell a security, which in this case would be stocks. Market makers are the people at the different market exchanges who actually do the trading. So they're gonna have a bid, which is the price at which they want to buy the stock, let's say $100, and then they're gonna have the ask price, which is pretty much the price they're gonna to wanna to sell the stock. So let's say it's 102 cents per share. Now, I know this two cent difference might not sound like a lot, but when you have thousands and thousands of shares being bought and sold, it can make up quite some money. And it's important to know that the difference between the bid, which is the price that someone wants to pay for the stock versus the ask price or the offer price, which is the price that someone is willing to sell their stock for is known as the spread. So that two cent difference is known as the spread. And this is where you can actually lose out on money if you use Robinhood account. Let me explain. When you go ahead and invest with Robinhood and you go ahead and put in a purchase price of let's say $100, the market maker has already bought those shares for let's say $99.98. And then they go ahead and sell it to you and pocket that profit of two cents. This might not sound like a lot with it only being two cents, but if you're buying hundreds of hundreds of shares, this can add up over time and eat away at your profits over time. So there's less money being able to be compounded. Now, of course, if you're only investing a couple hundred dollars or even a couple thousand dollars, this isn't gonna affect your profits that much. But if you're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars using these free investing platforms such as Robinhood, it can actually be eating away from your profits and you're actually better off paying for these services such as a platform on Vanguard. When you go ahead and use free financial platforms such as Robinhood to invest, you're actually gonna pay a premium on that spread. So again, if you wanna go ahead and purchase a share at $100, the market maker is gonna say, have bought it at perhaps $99.90, and now it's gonna be a 10 cent spread that they profit. So it actually costs a bit more money to purchase that share than if you were to go, let's say on Vanguard, you could have bought it perhaps at $99.95, only a five cent spread. And of course, this might not be that big of a deal if you're only buying a few shares, right? Then of course, you're better off actually using Robinhood because you get free commissions, right? You don't have to pay for any of those commission charges. But if you're actually buying hundreds or even thousands of shares, you're actually better off paying the $5 fee per commission because you're actually gonna be able to get a better rate on the shares that you purchase. Another way that Robinhood is able to make money is from their cash management feature. So the cash management feature is pretty much where you can go ahead and transfer money into your account, let's say $100, and you're able to go ahead and make a certain percentage on that money that you put into the account. This does vary over time. I know before it used to be about 2%, but now it's down to about like 1%. So it can vary depending on the economic situation, but pretty much you're gonna make about a one to 2% return on the money that's just sitting in your Robinhood account. And they pretty much go out and make money by lending out the money that you have settling in your account to other banks. That way they can go ahead and make a return on the money that they got from you that was pretty much settled in the account and can then put it back in your account. And now they have more money and more money and pretty much the money that you go ahead and put into that account allows for Robinhood to go ahead and further grow the amount of cash that they have available. With Robinhood having these larger spreads with these market makers, they're actually able to go ahead and profit off of the stocks that you go ahead and purchase. So again, if you were to purchase shares five cents higher than what it would normally cost with, let's say, Vanguard, they're actually gonna go ahead and profit those additional five cents. And again, this might not seem like a lot for just five cents, but when you have millions and millions of users, 
trading of different amounts of different shares and different prices, they're able to actually go ahead and profit from these market makers and pretty much this difference in spread. Now that we've taken a look at how Robinhood actually makes money and how we actually do end up paying for this free service on this platform, I hope you're able to better understand how Robinhood really works on its back end. And this isn't by any means meant to tell you, go ahead and don't invest on Robinhood. Like I personally still enjoy Robinhood and I'm willing to pay for those premium spreads when I go ahead and purchase shares on the Robinhood platform. But again, if maybe you're a millionaire or you're trading hundreds of thousands of shares, Robinhood is probably not going to be best for you. You're better off paying that commission share of like $5, I think it is, for when you go ahead and buy and sell shares in the market with Vanguard because you're not going to lose as much money. But I personally don't have hundreds of thousands of shares in the stock market, but still plan on using Robinhood just because it's such a convenient app to be able to go ahead and trade and invest my money with. Plus, I think it's just good for people to know how it is that Robinhood actually makes money. I hope you guys were able to better learn a little bit more about Robinhood and how it works. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And remember, today's a great day to have a great day. Thanks for watching.